Welcome to Exhibition. And hello, Thornton Walker. Hello, Richard. Great to see you. And uh, your, your exhibition is Studies in Solitude at Beaver Galleries in Canberra. Um, and this is the first exhibition in, in some 40 years or so of exhibiting that you haven't actually been able to see the works on the gallery wall. Um, does, does the title, in a sense, reflect that, that isolation? The title reflects the strange times we're going through at the moment. Um, I've been, like everybody else, very conscious of the world around me in the last, the last three or four months and the shutdown everywhere. I'm, I'm thrilled that the work is up there and on the walls because there was a truck turned away on the border a couple of weeks ago full of paintings that uh, didn't have the right paperwork to get through. But um, anyway, I can't go up. I'm, I'm in Melbourne, but the exhibition's gone ahead. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you feel that perhaps that, uh, you know, that, that sense of isolation, as you say, these strange times that we're in, uh, might be reflected in the works in some ways in this exhibition? I think they've become a little bit more um, uh, internal, the works. I've, uh, they're often, uh, there's quite a few studies of just a couple of objects, uh, still life objects in the exhibition. And I've, it's probably a fairly new thing to pair them back so much as I have. And uh, it reflects, I think, just the, the atmosphere, the, um, the feeling of wanting to just focus on, 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 on something quite subjective rather than um, reach out. But to yeah. some extent, that, that very careful observation of uh, individual or just a couple of objects does seem to have been part of your um, history, your body of work. Um, and actually, if I can, if I can take you back a little and uh, and quote uh, some of your own words uh, from the past, where you've said, "I want to convey not a feeling of stillness, but stillness itself, a reality removed from normality, an aspiration to a way of simply being and observing, minus the baggage." Uh, how are you trying to envelop the viewer in this philosophy? It's, it's an interesting process, um, painting, because it's, uh, I, I sometimes feel that if I'm achieving a, a uh, serenity or, or a, uh, if the work is surprising me in a way and shifting, shifting me towards that, it affects the viewer. So I'm not trying to uh, affect the viewer. I'm not trying to manipulate anyone, but the work itself will... Um, will speak for itself if it speaks to me, I found. Which is a, which is a wonderful thing because um, uh, it means that when I'm very, when, I'm, when I feel very happy with the work, when it, when it surprises me, when, when, when it, I, I almost don't know where it's come from, then I know that it's going to resonate. It makes it sound almost as though the the work has a life of its own rather than perhaps being a manifestation of your philosophy or intent. Well, it does. I, I think it. Uh, I think. I think um, uh, through history, good good painting always always does it. It. Um, uh, I, well, not not that I'm able to achieve that all the time, but it it. Um, Essentially, you're trying to kind of uh, move out of yourself and let some some creative some creative force take over. It sounds very mystical, and it's not at all mystical, but it's it's a um, it's a process. Mm. I've often thought that I can look at a work uh, when, when I know it's very when I think it's successful, and I I can almost feel uh, wonder who painted it or wonder how, how I got there. Mm. And if I try to reproduce that, I'm unable to. It's um, because it's in the moment. It's through the process of working that that happens. Going back uh, to that, that concept of stillness that you referred to, 
Um, there are actually two works in this exhibition called Stillness, uh, Stillness One and Stillness Two, but they are actually images with tremendous energy implicit in these ocean swells that, uh, that we see. Uh, yeah. can, can stillness be energized? It's a, it's a painting of, of something that's very dynamic and moving. But the painting itself is, is a frozen moment. Mm. And that's what the stillness is. And it's, um, uh, it's, for me, they're like still lives, the, um, the landscapes even. I try to create uh, a feeling of, of, of there being this um, lack of movement, even though there is a lot of movement in it, mm. in the scenes. Well, going to perhaps some of the other uh, landscapes in the exhibition, uh, they, have a, they have a very concrete form, a very defined sense of form, um, with works like Through the She-Oak uh, and yeah. Pine Grove and Sea. Um, mm. They have a slightly different feel to the, the, the softer, more ephemeral works uh, in the Still Life series. Yeah, yeah. It's true. My work, um, sometimes I see my work in an exhibition and I, I always have a, a, a variety of works. Uh, and I can think at times like it's, it's like a group, group show. But <laughs> it, it's my, it's, it's my, uh, they're, they're not painted concurrently. They're, they're worked on uh, with, with some months or years between them. That, that, those type of works, but I do uh, express lots of different uh, different concerns in my work, and I and I haven't wanted to narrow those concerns down to one um, to one particular way of working. I have at times, but it hasn't been successful for me. Just just in my own satisfaction, I find it's it's. Um, uh, someone described it the other day as being like it was a spiral and, and a circle going round it, getting higher and higher. And I'm going around the circle and I'm expressing different things as I move around. But it comes around again, what I've, what I've been doing. So, and they, the works on either side of that spiral are uh, quite, can look quite different. Okay, let's go back to um, stillness one and stillness two as you yeah. talk about the, the creative process, because as we look down to the bottom of both of those works, you very much reveal explicitly the, the fact that you are painting uh, yeah. were very realistic, evocative um, water surfaces become very clearly strokes of paint. Why do you want to reveal that painting process? Uh, well, that's where uh, the title comes in as well. It's a painting in the first place. And um, I love the painting process. I love the, uh, I love paint used, I love paint speaking for itself. And I don't just want to paint realistic objects without any kind of, uh, anyth anything else that's, um, that can, can lead the viewer or lead me into, into another whole different thought process. And that sometimes uh, seems to happen with the, the still life works, which are, which are predominantly watercolour works, uh, where there is a, a, a sense of the, of the distinctly solid form mixed with a, a degree of ephemerality, as though the, as though the object is kind of materialising in front of us, but maybe it hasn't quite completely materialized. How, how do you want the viewer to relate to that process? I've always been interested in, in juxtaposing um, a, um, a realism with, with an abstract um, quality and having one kind of feed the other. Um, years ago, I used to do just small Chinese bowls in a large space and it was a, um, it was an attempt to, to create this um, very pertinent energy between, between those two factors. And the same with the, these watercolours, which, um, which I take, 
take further, hopefully, than conventional still life watercolors and imbue them with something else, their washes and their and the paint quality. Um, I often, you know, employ accidents, drips. Um, uh, watercolor is wonderful because it it uh, does its own thing. If you if you allow it to, it, mm -hmm. if you put on a lot of water, it'll it'll um, you'll get tidal marks from the washes if you leave them and things like this. It does seem uh, that you are celebrating. Uh, you you find a, a joy in those artifacts of paint. Uh, as you describe them. I'm thinking of um, oranges with Chinese jar, where very yeah. clearly there are washes spreading out from the two oranges. Yeah, I love, I love the sensuality of oranges, but also watercolour. So it's combining the two, I suppose. Yeah. And I, um, I still want to convey the, uh, the, beauty the, the kind of um, the beauty of those those animate objects but but also talk about the paint quality I think I started off when I was quite young being very influenced by abstract artists um, like Cy Twombly and and um, uh, Tapis the Spanish painter mm. and I saw a lot of their work in Europe and, and it um, had a huge impact on me and I still have those, those interests. Although I'm a realist painter, but my, I, um, I still am very attracted to that, that sort of work that just works with mark making. Something that is a, a very deliberate type of mark making is the, the script or text, which appears uh, in quite a number of the works. What, what's the significance of that device for you? There's a few things. I, I often um, read bits of poetry or, or um, text from Basho or, or different um, philosophic pieces when I'm in the studio. And sometimes I'll, I'll find a piece, and there's some that I've repeated again and again, that add, add something to me in the, in the whole process of the work that I'm doing, but also also add something visually for me in in the um, actual structure of the picture. It once again, like the splashes and marks, it breaks down the realism of it. So presenting um, uh, in reality, you, you don't see words written all over a still life sitting on a table. But I, um, it's another element to to bring it back to to a work that. Is it also informed by different different things? So often, often the words I write, the quotes from poems from from Basho or, or Rumi, are uh, don't directly relate to the work, but uh, that doesn't worry me because neither do the neither do the marks, neither do the splashes, and and. Um, um, they're part of my thought process while I'm working. There do seem to be some reflections on mortality uh, in this exhibition as well. Uh, yeah. Portrait one and portrait two are both very explicit skulls. Um, rear view is also a skull, but you don't perhaps notice that immediately until you look a little more closely at, at the work. Mm. Did you decide to introduce that um, you know, that particular element of mortality? Um, look, it's actually interested me or, or been a part of my consciousness for a long, long time, since I was quite young. Our, our um, impermanence, our um, fragility on, the, on this planet. And I suppose um, that's been enhanced in recent times with the world gone crazy around us with um, COVID and um, uh, political situations all around the world in, in, in you, you've got to say some form of chaos. So it's, um, I suppose it makes me reflect even more about um, impermanence, about, um, you know, our own mortality. Yeah. Is that impermanence that you refer to perhaps uh, more subtly manifest in a work like 
disintegrating bowl. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Can you can yeah. you tell us a little about that? Because again, it looks as though it's built up with with a considerable number of layers of paint. Yeah, yeah. That painting, uh, just as an example, it's a small acrylic painting. I don't um, I don't usually work in acrylic, although I have gone through periods of working with that. But it has changed um, hundreds of times in the process of creating that work and. And the um, it 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 was surrounded by other objects at, at uh, different stages. They were sanded back um, and then painted over until it got to a um, a point when I was when I was reducing and reducing and reducing to to this um, this elemental kind of bowl sitting there that's also half disintegrating. And um, I. Um, I like that reduction that that happened in that painting, and and the it you you're left with with something with and you you feel like there is a history there. There's something. There's a lot been going on, but there's nothing much left. It's just the, <laughs> the bowl. But there's enough to to satisfy the me anyway. When I was um, uh, in terms of the very very simple composition, I, I think it's a successful work. I'd like to um, wrap up today by uh, saying that it's been it's been suggested in um, reviews of your exhibitions over the over the decades now uh, that that you've never been static that you've always found new evolutionary steps um, in in each series of exhibitions that you've had. What do you hope that viewers might find in this exhibition that perhaps they wouldn't have found before? Um, I think a couple of things. There's always a continuity, so people who have seen my work a bit would recognise the still life. Often they're the same objects that I painted um, over a long period of time. But uh, I have introduced some collage elements, um, which are fairly new, and some of my newer work at the moment has uh, is nearly all collage. Sometimes cut out. Um, uh, cut out objects that I've painted from other from other works that I, I've um, slowly reduced down and then and then collage them. So that would be an element that um, that perhaps is um, is putting me in a slightly different direction. Yeah. Well, we look forward to whatever the new directions may be, but it's certainly been fascinating to share where you are right now. So Thornton Walker, thanks for sharing your exhibition with us. Thank you very much, Richard. It was a pleasure.